According to reports, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson have signed with Impact Wrestling. It's a done deal. Slammiversary gets a brand new main event. Heath Slater and Bully Ray are teasing Impact Wrestling appearances on Twitter. And is Super Eric returning to Impact Wrestling? All this and more coming up next on Shooting Up North with Lewis Carlin right here on the Impact Lounge. This is the walking weapon, Josh Alexander, and you're listening to Shooting Up North. Hey folks, thanks for joining me today. I'm Lewis Carlin. Welcome to Shooting Up North. So according to reports, Luke Gallows, I should say according to several reports, Luke Gallows and Carl Anderson, the good brothers, have officially signed with Impact Wrestling. They, they haven't officially announced it themselves, but multiple reports are confirming that they have signed with impact wrestling and this is just absolutely fantastic news exactly what impact wrestling needed especially after uh, last week where we had the releases because of the speaking out movement the whole michael elgin thing the whole tessa blanchard thing this is exactly what impact wrestling needed more more positive press now coming out uh, with this uh, fantastic fantastic signing and i i'm excited i'm excited i can't wait slam anniversary all i want for slam anniversary right now is for carl anderson and luke gallows to be face to face with josh alexander and ethan page that that's all i want for slam anniversary right now and looks like we're gonna get it it's i just absolutely fantastic signing you know i couldn't be happier right now uh, i know a, there's a lot of people on social media saying oh well they should have went to aew well nope they didn't go to aew and there's no reason why they should go to aew uh they went to impact wrestling and again fantastic signing for impact wrestling and for all you aew marks out there i'm i'm sorry but you can't have everybody. You can't have everybody. And not, not everybody wants to just gravitate towards AEW. So Luke Gallows, Carl Anderson, it appears to be that they are officially with, with Impact Wrestling. I'm just waiting for an announcement, an official announcement from, from Impact Wrestling. They should just go ahead and make the official announcement and, and announce that Gallows and Anderson are signed. It doesn't have to be a surprise. Again, you know, con- confirm it, make the announcement, and, you know, again... I and I think I'm speaking for a lot of people out there. Just couldn't be happier. Could not be happier. Now, now there's rumors going out that saying that they're gonna be part of the Aces and Eights faction. I, I, cause you know Luke Gallows was was a part of the the original um, faction of Aces and Eights. I'm not for that. I, I just I think they should stay away from Aces and Eights. I think they should just come in as a tag team, on their own. They they don't need to be part of a faction. And I. All I want them to do is feud with the North. I just want I just want to see a series of matches with the North. So, um, yeah, man, I'm I'm excited, and it's good for them because you know according to the contract they'll still be able to wrestle for New Japan Pro Wrestling, so they'll have the freedom to do that because I know they want New Japan Pro Wrestling to be their main promotion, and they want they wanted to have a main U.S. promotion, and that promotion being Impact Wrestling. Now, now the only thing is, I wonder if. If um, if they'll be allowed to wrestle for New Japan Pro Wrestling when they're in the U.S., uh, but um, but you know, let's let's not uh, overthink that. Uh, doesn't matter, doesn't matter. We could uh, we'll find out when it actually happens. But um, bottom line is they're with Impact Wrestling, and uh, now that you got them in, now that, that now that you got another solid tag team in Impact Wrestling, I think they should just go all out and start bringing in. Some lesser known tag teams, some lesser known tag, lesser known tag teams on the indie scene that are extremely, extremely talented. And I'm thinking of like 
maybe the besties in the world. You know, let, let's get this tag team division, let's get this tag team division uh, short up and and make it just an incredible, incredible tag team division like the knockouts division is right now. So, like I said, I'm thinking of besties in the world. Uh, Davy Vega, Davy Vega, uh, Matt Fitchett, uh, bring them in. Uh, another team I'm thinking about is uh, TDT, La Tabernacle team uh, that's up here in Canada. Matthew St. Jacques and Thomas Dubois. Fantastic, fantastic, fantastic tag team. Another tag team they, they should consider bringing in as well, the Flip Brothers, Airwolf, uh, Angel Dorado. Uh, another fantastic, fantastic tag team. There's another tag team called Fight or Flight up here um, in, in Canada. Another uh, really, really good tag team. So as you're bringing in Gallows and Anderson, um, you're going to have Gallows and Anderson, you're going to have... Alexander and Ethan Page, two of the best tag teams in the world. Now, like I said, let's bring in some younger tag teams, some newer tag teams, and really get that tag team division going. Exciting times, exciting times. I know last podcast was, you know, a little bit of a sad time, but one podcast later, we're right back to positive times at Impact Wrestling, and I'm, I'm so super excited. I can't wait. It's, it's fantastic, and there's so many... So much potential out there on who else is coming uh, to Impact Wrestling. So many names out there. It's just, it's just. I mean, Heath Slater and, and Bully Ray are teasing on Twitter about coming uh, to Impact Wrestling. Uh, Heath Slater put up a video of him working out, saying, uh, "Oh, let me pull up uh, the exact uh, the exact post here." Uh, so it just says it's him working out. It says July 18th coming soon, you know. And of course, we know Slammiversary is July 18th, and we all know that Rhino kind of teased saying that he has a tag team partner and he has kids, referring to Heath Slater. I, I think he's going by Heath Miller now, um, but uh, teasing that uh, he's coming uh, to Impact Wrestling, which would be good. That'll be another great um, uh, tag team to add to the division if 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 Heath Slater slash Miller. Uh, whichever name he's going by, probably Heath Miller. Uh, WWE probably owns Heath Slater, but uh, let's, let's call him Heath Miller. Uh, if he comes in, teams with Rhino, that's another tag team you could add to the tag team division. And really, just uh, make that tag team division just just, just, just a phenomenal, phenomenal tag team division. Uh, but he T's coming in. And then you have Bully Ray, who was go- getting into it with Moose. Uh, so um, um, Moose responding to an Aces and Eights. Aces and Eights post uh, saying, uh, okay, so who? I think it was by D'Lo Brown. I think D'Lo Brown posted over there. He said, oh, Moose says, okay, smart guy. Obviously, that was an accidental error. I did graduate. Um, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm reading I'm reading his response uh, to, to Bully Ray. So actually here. Okay, so Impact Wrestling. I apologize. Impact, Impact Wrestling put up a... Aces and Eights um, tweet on June 24th, and Moose says, I see what you guys are trying to do. Aces and Eights suck, and I'll kick all their asses, real world champ. Well, he spelled all A-L, so I'll kick, I'll kick Al their asses. So Bully Ray responds by saying, all, you'll kick all their asses, not Al. We never had an Al in the Aces and Eights. At least I don't think we did. Oh, well, peace, Moose. See you soon. Maybe. I don't know. So he's kind of uh, he's kind of teasing that he's gonna be at Slammiversary as well, and hey, I I'm all for it, man. You know, great times right now. Great time, back to great times uh, after the the depressing week we had last week, but back to fantastic times uh, for Impact Wrestling. And uh, speaking of Moose, if if you watched last week's episode, um. He, uh, Moose took on uh, Crazy Steve, and uh, of course he beat Crazy Steve, and Tommy Dreamer got involved, and, and Moose attacked Tommy Dreamer, and then Tommy Dreamer cut a really, 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 really good promo on Moose, and w- which kind of led you to believe that maybe they're pushing Moose versus Tommy Dreamer at Slammiversary. I have nothing to really get excited about, and... I think that's a little bit of a swerve. I don't think we're going to get Moose and Tommy Dreamer at Slammiversary. I, at least I hope we know it because that's, to me, it's not really that appealing. It wouldn't really be that appealing, especially with all the names that they're, that they're teasing out there for them to give us Moose against uh, Tommy Dreamer at Slammiversary is not really all that appealing to me. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. But, uh, but I, think, I think Tommy Dreamer is going to bring somebody in to face Moose at Slammiversary. And, you know, 
could be Bully Ray after getting into that little um, Twitter tiff with um, with Bully Ray. It could be it could be Moose against Bully Ray. And some would think that Tommy Dreamer was quote unquote controlling his narrative when he cut that promo. You know, you could look at it that way, and we all know who's telling you to control your narrative. EC3, all over Twitter, telling you to control your narrative. So you could look at it that way as well. Tommy Dreamer cutting a promo that he wanted to pro to, that he wanted to cut, um, and it was almost like a shoot promo on on Moose. So he was controlling his narrative so you could look at it that way maybe he's gonna bring ec3 and we all know that um not last episode but the previous episode uh of impact wrestling they was it the, i think it was the previous one or well, maybe the one before that but moose uh wrestling against hernandez and uh, after the match uh ec3 music's hit and um, you know that's a little hint that EC3 and Moose might have a little thing going there, but uh, that that that's another possibility. I just I don't think it's going to be Moose versus Tommy Dreamer, uh, but whoever it is, it's 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 exciting times, man! Exciting times, super exciting times for Impact Wrestling, man! I'm just I'm I'm so pumped up. I'm so pumped up right now. Um, but Slamiversary now has a has a new main event. Slammiversary has a new main event, and it's going to be oh, a fatal four-way, a fatal four-way match that will feature Ace Austin versus Eddie Edwards versus Trey Miguel versus a mystery person, a mystery opponent. So there's a mystery opponent there. So who can it be? One can one could state a, a very strong case that it's going to be Madman Fulton, because uh, Madman Fulton holds a victory over Ed, over Eddie Edwards, a clean victory over Eddie Edwards, and he holds now a dis- disqualification vi- uh, victory over Trey Miguel. So, a very strong case that it could be Madman Fulton, or it could be it could be uh, one of the guys that they're teasing. It could be it could be Rusev. Uh, it could possibly be EC3. Uh, I know, although I think we're going to be leaning towards the EC3 Moose feud. Uh, It could be, who else could it be? It could be Eric Young, uh, or it could be... Or it could be Chris Saban, you know. And I know they're they're announcing that a former world champion will appear at Slammiversary, and they could say that because they have their insurance policy in case they can't sign an EC3 or an Eric Young or or somebody else. They have their insurance policy, and Chris Saban, who is who works for Impact Wrestling as a producer, former TNA champion, so they can safely say that. A world champion, former world champion, will be appearing at Slammiversary because they have Chris Sabin on the roster. But uh, I would love to see Chris Sabin in that in, in that main event. You no, know, we haven't seen Chris Sabin wrestle in a while. There were rumors, past rumors, that he might have been suicide, but I, I don't think. Um, even I said it could have been Chris Sabin, uh, but I, I don't think that anymore. Uh, but but none, nonetheless, it's going to be a uh, it's going to be very interesting to see who. Who that um, that mystery uh, person is, uh, the fourth mystery person in the in the fatal four way match at Slammiversary. And again, you know, if if it's Madman Fulton, uh, Madman Fulton could could definitely say, hey, I have these, like I said, has have these victories. I'd be all for Madman Fulton. I wouldn't mind putting the belt on Madman Fulton, you know, and make him uh, just turn him into an unbeatable monster. I, I personally, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't mind that at all. I wouldn't mind. I wouldn't mind the title on Ace Austin either. Uh, so we'll see. Um, I'm, we'll see what goes. We'll, we'll see what goes down at Slammiversary. Um, I'm really looking forward to this show. Uh, this is going to be. A, I think it's going to be one of their best pay per views in it in um, in a long time. Uh, so I'm I'm really looking forward to it. And actually, let's go over some of the matches. There were other matches. A number of matches have been announced already uh, for Slammiversary. In addition to the Impact Wrestling uh, Fatal 4-Way World Championship match, uh, Jordan Grace defends the Knockouts title against Deonna Perrazzo, uh, which should be a fantastic match. Uh, there's uh, the X Division match, uh, Willie Mack defending his title against Chris Bay. As we know um, from the past episode of Impact Wrestling, Johnny Swinger is banned from ringside. I um, I have a, uh, I have a feeling that... Uh, 
and this feeling has been has been coming for a, for a long time. I've been feeling this feeling for a for a long time, I should say. I I think Chris Bay is gonna win the X Division title, and I think Rich Swan is going to going to interfere in this match and cost Willie Mack uh, the X Division Championship, uh, Impact Tag Team Championship, uh, the North uh, versus uh, Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamrock. Um, I kind of knew that was coming. Uh, that's going to be another uh, tremendous, tremendous match. I, I have a strange feeling that, um, well, I, I did, but I don't know anymore. I, I was thinking before Gallows and Anderson signed with Impact Wrestling, I, um, I was thinking that Callahan and Shamrock are going to win that match uh, and take the tag team titles. But I think now that what's going to happen is the North's going to win the match, and then they say, they're going to come out and say that they've defeated um, – all the tag teams in Impact Wrestling, that there's nobody left for them to challenge. There's nobody left in Impact Wrestling to give them a real challenge. And then Gallows and Anderson will come to the ring and they'll be face-to-face and they'll face off. Uh, which would just, I would just go absolutely freaking nuts when I see that, man. I just, I'm hoping that happens, man. And then we have the uh, the number one contender or knockout gauntlet match. Uh, it's going to be uh, Rosemary. Uh, in, involved in this match will be Rosemary, Nevaeh, uh, Susie, uh, Kiera Hogan, Taya Valkyrie, Tasha Steeles, Alicia Edwards, Kylie Ray, Kimberly, and Jessica Havoc. Uh, so that should be a fantastic match. If I had to pick a winner on this one, I'd probably go with Kylie Ray. I would probably pick Kylie Ray to win this, uh, and um, and she would be next in line um, for whoever wins the match between Jordan Grace and Diona Prazo. I, you know, I think you know they haven't officially announced Yona Perazzo has signed yet, but I have a feeling she's already signed with Impact Wrestling. They're just waiting for the announcement to make the announcement. I, I think they want to make a, um, a bunch of announcements uh, at one time. Uh, so I'm thinking Yona Perazzo is going to win this match at, uh, at Slammiversary. Just a, just a gut feeling I have. Uh, I, I can see them putting the title on her um, right away, especially if she's uh, signed a, um, a long-term deal with them. Uh, so yeah, so Slamversary is shaping up to be uh, an, ex- an, an incredible car. Like I said, I, I, I'm so excited for Slamversary. It should be their best pay-per-view in a while. Uh, we're going to see a lot of surprises there. And um, don't want to keep repeating myself, but I am so looking forward to Slamversary, man. So looking forward to Slammiversary. Um, so uh, we got a uh, we got a tease at the end of the last episode of Impact Wrestling of the possible return of the Super Eric character. That's Eric Young was playing a superhero character, and I personally was not a huge fan of that character. And I really hope that they don't bring that character back for Eric Young. I hope his 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 um his return to Impact Wrestling is not as the super Eric character. I just I just just not not really a biggest fan. That's that's my opinion. Other people might think differently uh, and that's fine. But um I'm the, the actually you know just thought just popped into my head the way I see it. The, the what what would be really cool you know, but what would be really cool is the North against uh, Sammy Callahan and Ken Shamrock, and Eric Young attacks Sammy Callahan during that match, which causes them costs them the match against the North, and then of course the North um, could make a put out that challenge, and which would be answered by Gallows and Anderson. Uh, but and then they would set up a feud between uh, Eric Young. And Sammy Callahan, but but not attacking him as Super Eric, but attacking him as his sanity character, Eric Young. That's that's the Eric Young I want I want to come back to Impact Wrestling. I'm a big fan of that character, big fan of him in, in that role, and um, that Eric Young versus Sammy Callahan would be fantastic. Super Eric versus Sammy Callahan would not be such a great feud, but. Um, We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see what happens at Slamversary. And uh, we'll, we'll see how it goes. But um, one more time. I, please, Eric Young. I, I, I really feel he's coming back. But please, don't come back as Super Eric. Okay, there. There, there you go. Okay, so I was on uh, social media 
and um, this was this was um, a couple of days ago, and there was a guy, uh, there's a guy, and uh, again I don't I'm not I won't name uh, names on social media. I don't want anyone you know getting upset at me or anything. Uh, but there was a guy who who said on social media that that impact because of the Joey Ryan, Dave Christ, Michael Elgin, and Tessa Blanchard uh, releases or Tessa Blanchard was uh, terminated, um, that Impact Wrestling has now taken a huge step backwards again, and they probably won't be able to recover. Yeah, Impact Wrestling has taken a huge step backwards, he says. So let's, let's, uh, let's dissect this post. Let's dissect this post, and let's, let's talk about it for a little bit, because it got me a little, uh, got me, <laughs> got me a little worked up. First of all, first of all, you know, Dave Christ, Joey Ryan, Michael Elgin, they were they were released because of the speaking out movement, because of serious, serious, serious allegations against them. And their releases were completely justified, completely warranted. And they're not the only promotion doing Impact Wrestling is not the only promotion that's that's doing this. Um, a lot of wrestlers who have been called out in this speaking out uh, movement, you know, have been released from other promotions. So, so there's that. And Tessa Blanchard, Tessa Blanchard's contract was terminated, uh, quite basically because her contract was was running out. She apparently had no interest in resigning, <coughs> resigning with Impact Wrestling. Excuse me. And um, they wanted her to drop the title. They announced her for Slammiversary, and uh, they wanted her to send one promo, just one promo. I mean, send a promo from Mexico, um, and they were going to uh, edit it into an interview uh, with Josh Matthews. But she didn't send the video, so she had no interest in, in, in moving on at all with Impact Wrestling. So Impact Wrestling uh, made the decision, and they uh, terminated her contract. It was, a, it was a business decision, and it's something they had to do, and I totally agree with Impact Wrestling. They made the right call. So... Is Impact Wrestling, have they taken a, a huge step backwards because of this? Absolutely not. What they've done is they've taken a huge step forward. And that will be apparent after Slammiversary. That said, I want to thank everybody for listening, listening to me today. My name is Lewis Carlin. This is Shooting Up North as heard on the Impact Lounge. And until next time, thank you very much. Take care. Bye-bye. Stay safe, everyone. So long. Bye-bye.